This is September 14, 2022. Title of this late morning, early morning, late night meditation is Urgency. It's about 4.20 in the morning. Urgency would be probably the best word to describe the timeline that we're in right now because everything is being moved into an urgent status. It's urgent that we change. It's urgent that we complete the uh, process that we're in right now and move into the next level. I know the word says... If the time is not cut short, no flesh will be saved alive. We've all read and reread that. How does that pertain to the sons of God and what's happening in the earth? Well, that's a very good question. How does it pertain? I know that the positioning of the sons of God right now as the executors of God's estate has been crucial. Everything has been about timing and positioning in God. We've spoken about the need to keep speaking the word, to keep penetrating the realm of spirit, and I like that word penetrating because we are penetrating the world of spirit right now and it's it's not even so much as with what we're voicing although we have spoken of the need uh, you know to keep voicing the word to keep voicing the judgment as God would lead but it is the very out manifestation of the presence of God that has been in the works under covers for years now that really um, is that which is hidden and is becoming made manifest and it's that presence of God that is penetrating the plane of the earth that is beginning to have a level of manifestation that has not been here before and it's urgent that we not only move through this level and timeline of change but that we become aware of how much we've become we've said that so many times and I can't say it enough because the spirit keeps pointing at me you know, this is my word. It's just, it's be aware, realize, you know, uh, accept what I have become in you. And one of the things that I know that we've understood, but maybe it has left some room to, you know, to manifest even more clearly is how much and how effective the work of the cross has been in our lives that has removed the soul and the the Adamic nature. Like Paul said, that I might live, you know, he lives and I die daily. I'm paraphrasing the scripture, but you know what I'm referring. Paul spoke about how he died daily. You know, I die that he might live within me. And that was a an ongoing reality to Paul. It was an ongoing experience. It was not a theory. It was not a, a, a faint hope or a wish. He was aware of how much he was getting out of you know getting out of the way 
for the Spirit of the Lord to fully take up his abode within Paul. How much more that applies to us, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Is there any question that we're in the time of the ends of the ages? Absolutely not. We are at the ends of the ages. And it's so important, urgent, that we recognize how much God has been able to get us out of the way by virtue of the deep working of the cross. To it, the presence of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ within us is on an unprecedented level in the earth. It's, it's staggering. It, it really is staggering to, to grasp it. Because of the billions of people on the face of the earth, you, your mind has a difficulty in, in just grabbing that concept that what he has done in you as a very small remnant is setting a new precedent in the earth of what God is going to do on a greater scale as time moves on and as we complete writing this book you know we're talking about something that is a living unfolding experience this whole thing that Paul experienced where he really experienced an awakening and a, a grasping of how much he had stepped back and was out of the way that the Spirit of the Lord might manifest within him. That wasn't rhetoric. That wasn't a, a concept to Paul. That was an ongoing living experience daily. He says, I died daily. Well, not only did he die daily, but it was, it was blended with the experience daily of recognizing how much he had become the Christ. How much the Father had taken up his abode. Certainly not theory. Theory isn't going to cut it and say, well, let me preach to you out of the book, you know, uh, uh, or out of books or whatever. The doctrine. Not interested in doctrine. Not interested in the, <clears throat> the deduction of the mind. Only interested in one thing. You have it or you don't have it. And if you have it, you, you will manifest it. Even if it seems on a minute level, you will manifest it. And we have been in this timeline of the out-manifestation of the presence of God through us. It is urgent that we grasp the depth of what we are in God, the control that we have in God, the authority that we have in God, the reality of what our very presence evokes as we move from place to place and see people and touch people's lives. We don't have to try and work anything up. We don't have to try and be something. We are something. <laughs> we are the presence of God. We, we're not working up to it. Oh, I want to be, I want to be, I believe I will be. No, that's just the soul. You are. You are that you are. We are the presence of God 
in the earth. We are a living parousia in the earth. What is it that God is looking for from us right now? Certainly, a deep grasping of what he's become within us. But something more, something far more, because with this deep awareness, grasp, recognition, enlightenment, the light bulb turning on, the the day-by-day experience unfolding, with all of that comes the manifesting of God. <clears throat> I don't know how to explain all this stuff. You don't really explain it. You can kind of highlight points. But you've got to walk this. This has to be our reality. Yes, it is our reality. But it's got to go deeper and deeper. And there's an urgency on this. And I know that we're not playing games. We're not, you know, tickling our ears. We're not fantasizing we just realize that a great mantle is resting upon us a great mantle is resting upon the sun's And it's all tied into this awakening, this realization that as we walk like Paul walked, I die daily. You know, I die that he might live within me and the power of his resurrection. This is happening now But there is an urgency. And the concern has been, Lord, if things don't change, if they don't really come to a head and a culmination, will we be able to make this transition? Will it happen? In in many ways, it feels like things are on the docket and it, it, it doesn't seem yet <clears throat> like we have attained it. But I know that when my mentor in the faith passed over the veil, one of the things he said a few minutes prior to that and nobody understood what it was, he just made a random comment, I have attained it. And I knew what he spoke of. He had attained the deep presence of God, the awakening within him. And and one would have thought, how could he have questioned who he was? Yet the enemy was always badgering, coming against him with accusations. So it was like a running drip of water. Always hitting, always hitting, always trying to create doubt, second guess. But he broke through before passing over the other side. And he attained it. He attained the breakthrough within him of the absolute immersion of God within him and you could say well if that happened how is it or why is it that he would have died passed over well we'll have to ask him that we don't know always what God requires 
We know why Jesus died on the cross. And he gave himself up. I think to a large extent, this man that we knew, and we we still know, and have communications with, gave himself up for something greater. I don't know if he had a choice, but I know that is part of the path he walked. And I know that we as his sons, as the sons and daughters of the living God, we give ourselves up. We brought a word recently about obedience. The Lord said, when your, when your disobedience is complete, I will judge, well, no, when your obedience is made complete, then I will judge all disobedience. And he said that about a week ago. And I was like, Lord, we live with that always because it's in the whole realm of the working of the cross to get the soul flesh out of the way, to get that last bit of rebellion of the Adamic nature out of the way so that God fully has free course within us. So we, we, we live with that knowledge and realization. But we're here. We're here. And Heavenly Father, we, we give ourselves. We don't hold back. We let go, as you have commanded so many times, we let go of our life that we have known until now. And I know, Lord Jesus, as you have said, flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. There must be a breakthrough in this timeline, a breakthrough that transforms these mortal bodies into the immortal, you know, uh, presence of God the Lord Jesus Christ firstborn of many brethren broke through set the precedence that we may follow in his steps we are following in the Lord Jesus steps we are not looking to uh, assume a position to to assume something that you know says okay I'm I'm equal to the Lord. What foolish thought that would be. That is not what we're saying. But we attain the out-resurrection from the dead. We attain what it was the Lord died on the cross for. More than just delivering us from the sins of the Adamic human nature but that which delivers us, that opens a door that hitherto had been closed to us, but that opens a door to the redemption of the body, to the sign and seal of sonship. Romans 8, to it is the redemption of the body. We're here right now. The redemption of this body is urgent. Our positioning in God is urgent. Our manifestation of His presence in the earth is happening. Where We can't control it. We don't want to control it. We're not trying to hide it. We're not trying to hold back. If anything, we're giving it fuel and fire. Oh God, manifest Yourself. Oh God, be fully released within the, the vibration and, frame, and framework of all of your sons. Be released, Father. Be released, Lord Jesus, in your fullness, in your fullness of power and dominion and authority, in, in a brightness of your rising that has never been seen before, <clears throat> but that shines like the brightness of the firmament. Be released, O God through us that is the urgency of the hour 
Do you feel it? It possesses you. It, it, it occupies your every waking thought. You can't escape it. Not that you would want to. Christ in us becomes more than just the hope, but becomes the answer of what God is doing in this age. The hand of the enemy has been running amok, and that's just on the physical plane. The spiritual plane, well, that's a whole different picture. Lord, we know that you need us over there more so than over here. And Lord, you've been drawing us. And we've been more involved on the other side than we understand. The warfare has been more involved than we understand. Our weariness, our, our strength, our, everything has been affected far more than we understand because we're carrying a presence in the realm of spirit and our spirits are very active in the spiritual conflict. It's not theory, although it can seem like theory, but it's not. And as such, our physical bodies, like we said recently, are going to have to change to stay up with the demands that are being made. But we're in this transition and everything is changing. But there's an urgency, O God, hasten thy coming, thy completion, thy finishing handiwork within each of your sons, O God. We feel the urgency, we sense the urgency, we sense the need to really see, to see deeply with the eyes of our spirit what you've already done and what you are doing. Till every part of us has come alive. Every part of us has come alive. And you begin to walk in a control that we have not seen before this time. Lord, we give ourselves afresh. We let everything go. We give you access into every part of our being, Lord. Yea, in the book it is written of me, I come, O God, to do thy will. Lord, we give ourselves to the urgency of the hour. We know that If time was not cut short, no flesh would be saved alive. And I don't even want to define that by some archaic means of looking at it on a physical level and saying, you know, if time time cut short and and it's going to be a nuclear bomb or what. I don't know if we really understood that scripture very well. But we're in the time. (coughs) The time is being cut short. We're in the time or period that God is going to end time. That is a word that came seven years ago, roughly. That God was going to end time. And we know that in the realm of the Spirit, Time does not exist. In the realm of the Father's kingdom, time has no place, has no position. But we know that time is an entity that that does exist and works oftentimes closely with the spirit of death and the darkness. 
It's time, not that we're using that word over and over again, it's time that we see an end to time. It's time the sun's transition out of this existence in the natural plane into an existence fully in the realm of the spirit. Because with that transition ends the working of the spirit of futility and the working of the spirit of time within our hearts and minds. And that was a prophecy that came as the sons break three and move into the liberty of the sons of God that all of the world will still exist under the spirit of futility, under the spirit of time. But the sons of God themselves will not. They will have walked free from it. We're in that transition of pulling out of a realm that has been governed and dictated by time, by illusion, by futility, into a realm and world that knows no limitations, the kingdom of God. Lord, we loose upon ourselves this evening, this morning, a deep sense, a deep grasp of the urgency of where we are right now. It is urgent that we make this shift. It is urgent that we make this transition. It is urgent, O oh God. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen.